However, it's a new law. They're, they're, they're laws now. They've always been laws, sorry. So, look, I mean, there's plenty out of that game that were discussed, but we need to get a South African perspective because we had a lot to say seven days ago. And Nick Mallard's a former Springbok coach. Nick, thanks for joining us on the breakdown. Smiling away, of course you are, because you're back to number one in the world. Uh, look, let's just talk about this. How important was it that this Spring Springbok team finished the rugby championship for a win in your eyes? Yeah, I think it was pretty vital. We we won the World Cup. We did well against the British Lions. We won the series, you know, despite the style of rugby we chose to play. And uh, we had a very disappointing tour up up to last uh, up to Saturday. Um, it was a very big game for us, in the sense that you go naught out of four. Um, it would have made that Northern Hemisphere tour tough. The criticism in South Africa gets pretty intense when you lose, despite the fact it would have been three very close games. So uh, to come out uh, with a win against, um, you know, our, our most respected and, and formidable opponents uh, was, was, was outstanding for South Africa. Um, I was listening into what you guys said and, and uh, about uh, the strength and conditioning guy charging up and down. I agree with you entirely. I think that's uh, appalling behavior. And uh, he didn't know the laws either. So he got that completely wrong. And uh, a number of South African guys have got it wrong. They've, they've posted that clip saying that, uh, that the referee should have um, given us a, a, a line out in their 22. And it was just incorrect. But, um, you know, when you get passionate supporters who, and the laws are quite complex, uh, you come up with those strange uh, uh, decisions. Nick, it's lovely to see you. The last time you and I together, we were singing... Don't look back in anger by Oasis, mate. You got, you were going good too at the time. <laughs> but um, that was Japan when the world was when the world was really different, Nick. But um, this contrast that we're seeing from from South Africa, I was really critical the week before because they said, you know, this is our DNA. Whereas on the weekend, I really think that that is South Africa DNA. You know, that mix of, of that hard running, yeah. high kicks and running the ball. But against the Lions and then the first test, there seems to be some confusion about what a South African style is. I mean, do you have, what's your opinion on it? Well, I, I think you're 100% right. I think we lost the, the first test against you guys, the, the 100th test in the last five minutes by kicking away five or six balls. Uh, and it seemed as though they were playing robotically to a game plan. Um, that just didn't make sense. We we turned over a couple of balls in those last five minutes. We had numbers against you guys. It doesn't matter whether you're in your half or not. When you've got an opportunity to hold on to the ball and take it to the opposition, with and when you're leading with uh, you know four, three, three uh, minutes to go, you're more likely to get a penalty awarded to you. And and we kicked away possession, allowing the best counter-attacking team in the world to run back at us. And of course, they won the penalty, which won the game. So what was very disappointing was that it appeared that kicking was our only option in that first test. And, it, and it's not. Uh, South Africa proved in the World Cup final against England that we do play very well off turnovers. Uh, both tries, I think we scored, was were off turnovers. And um, obviously, if we manage to get a penalty advantage, we often have a crack off that. But generally, we're not as skillful as um, as the Antipodean teams. You know, Australia and New Zealand have better attack than we do, and we. But we do have a better set piece, in my view, and we have a better driving more. So, if we can win penalties from that and 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 get territory through a kicking game, and then pressurise with a very physical defence, um, which 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 gives you turnovers. We have to then use those turnover opportunities to score tries. And the second test against the British Lions, we did exactly that. Uh, I mean, a guy like Colby was fantastic and, and, and can score tries from situations where you play against unstructured defence. And what we didn't do in that first test against, against you guys was play off turnovers. We, we just kicked it. And what was so good about this second test was that... Uh, we had a crack. You guys left three players back for our kicking game, and which, which opened up more space for us. And we got really good momentum. I mean, there are a couple of good carries in midfield. Uh, you know, we, we proved, I mean, even that is a bit lateral, but at least the guys are going forward. They're running onto the ball. Um, we had uh, we had Itzabeth once who made a great uh, break down the middle of the field. I mean, here, yeah, where would we have ever seen that? You know, Faf throw a 20-meter pass across the field on our 22 because you've left guys back. And uh, 
it was just so much more encouraging. I mean, yeah, we should have scored it. This is a situation where New Zealand score. The quality of our pass after we'd made the break wasn't good enough. But, um, you know, stole a line out. Uh, Mbanambi very nearly got over the line. That brilliant pass behind his back from Lukanya Am proves that we've got players capable of playing, a a, a, you know, good, attractive attacking rugby. It's just that they've got to, um, the players, the drivers, the 9, 10, and 15, you know, have to spot that opportunity and take it when it happens. Nick, I mean, you, you've spoken about it. You know, historically, your strengths have been your kicking game, the physicality of your, uh, of, of your big forwards. But your domestic game is, is actually quite expansive. Uh, you know, you've encouraged, you know, different rules to allow your schoolboys rugby to actually to play a, a bit more. This result in the weekend, is this going to go a long way into getting that balance right in terms of, of the, you know, the game that you, you can play, that, that kicking game, game and also balancing it up with the flair that you have got out wide? Well, I really hope so, Mills. We've got we've got tremendous backline players in South Africa, and what worried me a little bit was that um, we we choose uh, for the national side to play a certain way, which is uh, you know, Test match rugby is all about winning the game, and uh, and so we play to our strengths. And South Africa's strengths are without doubt our set piece. We produce these very big, powerful prop forwards and locks. We can bring guys off the bench who are fresh, who are just as big as the guys you start. And if we can, you know, if the laws as they are, which allow you to win penalties from scrums and penalties from driving balls in the lineout, you know, we'd be stupid to play away from those strengths. Um, we also are a, a country that that loves physicality. We we defend really well. In fact, you know, we don't we don't attack particularly well because we want to run into people instead of drawing people <laughs> and passing. But it, it, the physicality of South Africans is something you can't take away from us. So. Rossi Erasmus and Jacques Nienhaber have exploited this. And, um, and what I found absolutely fascinating was uh, New Zealand used the set piece generally to, to get the ball into the back line and have a crack and start getting phases going. And your tight forwards play like loose forwards, brilliant handling of the ball, and it's spectacular to watch. But South Africa can't compete at that level. But I would say that New Zealand struggled to compete against the physicality of South Africa at the moment because in that first test match, you know, we got a lot of turnovers, we got a, we got a lot of penalties, we won four of your lineouts. So um, it's, it's a clash of styles, which I really liked. But what, what I was encouraging, to get back to your question, I think that uh, our school's rugby and our provincial rugby will follow the lead of the national side. And to see us passing the ball in situations where you have left three guys back, which means that, they, that you've got lesser numbers in the front, in the front line. So, you know, we, we, we've got more numbers. We should pass it. We should learn to run straight and create these opportunities. I really hope that, that this filters down to our um, provincial sides and also particularly to our school sides. Because if we could match our physicality in the pack and in driving malls and, and, uh, and our great defence, if we could increase our attacking ability, you know, we would be just that much better as a team. And um, and obviously, I think that uh, that we'd be probably more attractive to watch. But I, I think this last test match on Saturday, whoever won the game, um, it was a great, great exhibition of rugby from both teams. And I thought it was well refereed as well. The fact you're talking about physicality with three outside backs is just wasted. <laughs> the people at home would have loved it and appreciated it, but for us, we're just going, we don't want to borrow that. When you start skill and speed, that's what we're interested in. But we congratulate your team. One of the other reasons we wanted you on the show, though, was to test our knowledge. We've asked you tonight to give us yeah. a trivia question. Ooh. Please, Nick, before you go, and thanks for joining us. What are you testing us with tonight? Oh, it's a pleasure. What's it's the question? a pleasure, Jeff. Nice talking to you. I know the other two had a bit of physicality, but I think you... You were a bit more on the skill side, I think. The question. Unlucky, mate. Unlucky. Is that is that a nice is that is that a nice is way that, of saying I was afraid? That the question. That's a nice. A have you got a trivia it's question a for us? <laughs> well, we thought we just. I have. Done... I, I have. Listen. Okay, here we go. Okay, quickly. We, we got uh, we got uh, Elton Yankees kicking a drop goal on Saturday. Can you tell me um, which South African rugby player has kicked the most drop goals against against New Zealand? Thanks, Nick. Oh. We'll get thinking. Oh. I don't know. Have you guys ever kicked? I don't know if they have. Thanks, Nick. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Cheers, mates. OK, while we're thinking on that, let's go to a break. Plenty more to talk about after this.